Oh, good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all. If I look a bit sad, it's because we lost the cricket yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> we were winning. We were winning. There you go. I think I'll wait for the plane to go. by joining in the prayer of preparation. All mighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. A moment or two of silence as we reflect on our lives, allowing God, the Holy Spirit, to pinpoint those areas, those things we said, done, or thought, which have helped set Him. We say together, All Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Collect for this week. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Don't always do this, but I thought I'd keep to the reading for today, which is quite good. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning to read at verse 1 the resurrection of Christ. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than five hundred of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all he appeared to me also, as of one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I have worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Luke chapter 7, beginning to read at verse 36. Now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to din have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in the town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisees who invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man was a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two men owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him 500 denarii, the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he cancelled the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt counsel. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned towards the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she has wet, wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not pour oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little, loves little. And Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, of Christ. So, Jesus has been invited to a meal by Simon the Pharisees. Now, why did he invite him? I don't think he invited him because he was aware of some need in his life, or because he necessarily wanted to hear anything Jesus had to say. No, I think he invited him because Jesus was headline news at the moment and Duke Simon wanted him to be there so he could show him off, impress his friends. So the meal is now underway. They would recline at low tables with their feet out behind them, resting on their left arm or their elbow, taking the food with their right hands. In warm weather, the meals were held outside. All kinds of people would come, just spend a few moments perhaps, perhaps listening to what pearls of wisdom from the latest guest. Well, all was going well until, until Simon looked up and saw this woman approach the feet of Jesus. She was well known in the community. She was a prostitute. And she may was certainly not welcome there. So it must have taken quite a bit of courage for her to turn up that day. The woman intends to anoint Jesus. And we learn that this is an expression of grateful love because she has been, received God's overflowing forgiveness. But then, as soon as she reached his feet, she's overcome. She starts crying, and her tears wet the feet of Jesus. To dry his feet, she lets her hair down, down. a no, certain no-no in that society, and very definitely would upset Simon even more. And finally, she anoints his feet with the perfume, the expensive perfume she bought with her. Someone's written these words. The woman entered the Pharisee's house in order to give expression to her love for Jesus and her dependence on him. All she'd heard and seen of Jesus previously had awakened in her guilty heart and mind a desire to be different. Now, 
it is time for a new start, but only Christ can give that to her. The woman brought her deep need to Jesus in a de decisive moment of worship, surrender and reliance. And the writer comments, so many of our well-intentioned spiritual resolutions come to nothing because they are not focused in some definite act of commitment, sacrifice and service. But Simon is horrified. And in unspoken criticism, he says, in effect, Jesus is no prophet. If he was, he would have known what kind of woman this is and sent her packing. But of course, Simon is about to discover, as many have done since, that Jesus knows only too well what is going on. And he answers Simon's unspoken criticism by telling a parable. It's about two debtors, one owing 500 denarii, a big sum, the other 50, a small sum. Neither can pay back, and the money lender cancels both debts, and it did need a great deal of insight to guess who would be the most grateful, although Simon somewhat grudgingly seems to point to the right direction. Now, Jesus presses home the contrast between Simon and this woman. When Jesus had arrived, there was no customary welcome given to him, no washing of his feet. Yet the woman had washed them with her tears. No kiss of welcome, but she had kissed his feet. No anointing with perfume on his head. But she had anointed his feet with expensive perfume. The parable illustrated the difference between the Pharisee and the prostitute. His action that day showed that he was conscious of no need, therefore knew no forgiveness, showed no love. On the other hand, the prostitute was deeply conscious of how great her need was, and in Jesus she had found someone who could meet her need and grant her forgiveness. Now, had she previously met Jesus? Well, we don't know, but it's most likely that she joined a crowd listening to him and what he had said and touched her heart and her mind. And then hearing that he's in the area, going to be a guest at Simon the Pharisees, she takes courage and goes to be with her. Here was her opportunity to show how grateful she was, how much she loved. And publicly that day, Jesus pronounced her forgiveness and sent her home in peace. We finish with that same writer who comments on Simon. The Pharisee was far too concerned about the intruding woman to recognise his own sins. He was incensed by her blatant immorality, irritated by Christ's apparent lack of prophetic insight. Like many others, he was far better at tracing the offending speck in the eyes of others than seeing the log in his own. He needed the sensitive rebuke of another before he could become aware of his unfriendly welcome, his unloving attitude and his uncostly service. Let's pray. A time of silent prayer when we reflect on that incident long ago. A contrast between Simon the Pharisee and that poor woman. And let's be challenged by that woman. A courage, a commitment, a longing to be indifferent, to have a fresh start. A few moments of silent personal prayer.
So let's pray for our world, a very needy world. So much need. People ignorant of the gospel. People resistant to the gospel. People perhaps responding in their own way. So we pray for our world. We pray for the Christian church throughout the world. That its leaders, its people, may bear witness to the fact that Christ died for each and every one of us. He rose again. He's opened the gates of heaven. Let's pray this good news. Like St Paul proclaimed it to the Corinthian church people, may we as a church proclaim this good news. Let's pray for those who are struggling with coronavirus, health services at stretching point. Those areas where there are horrific fires, the western coast of America, the Amazon Basin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for our own country with the challenge of testing. So many wanting to be tested, and yet the facilities aren't there. Let's pray for our government particularly Matt Hancock and others who have responsibility of putting all this into practice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for those we know who are unwell, who are sad. We pray particularly for the family and friends of Irene Malter, one of our number who died recently and her burial of ashes and memorial service was yesterday. Let's pray for them in their sadness and loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for our Bishop, Bishop John, Archdeacon Mike, our Vicar Kingsley and his family, for Mark James, for us, the challenge we face as a church, financial challenge, the challenge also of keeping together even though we can't all meet together. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. In a few moments, for our own prayer, praying for people who are very much on our hearts at this time. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we come to the prayer of consecration. The Lord is here. He Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, 
eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The end of supper, taking the cup, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once fall upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We say together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We say together, Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom.
join together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today, and remain with you always. <laughs>